Gosh, that's a really interesting question. I think when I think about digital disruption, it's not so much the different ways in which people are communicating, it's the business model. And one of the most powerful things about the web and the world of digital communication is how companies are making money in very different ways to the ways they used to. For example, Google, they give away their product. 95, maybe even 95, 98% of people who use Google never pay them a cent. And they make their money off the thing which costs them virtually nothing, which is the AdWords. And it's, it's disruptive business models that I think are, are the real definition of what we've seen rise out of the, the use of the internet. So I think um, the, the ways in which a marketer or a company can prepare for this sort of disruption, I, I think perhaps we should be a little careful um, to assume that this is a bit like a war that we have to prepare for. I think it can be much more um, much more enjoyable than that for a start and actually much less, I'd encourage people to be much less fearful of the unknown. Most of the value that, that lies in terms of thinking about digital strategy already exists inside your organization. So the three sort of ways to prepare I'd suggest are use your own people. They probably already know a lot about what needs to be done. Talk to your customers because they also can start to tell you much more easily how they want to engage with you, what sort of products they want to buy. And thirdly, try things out in small pieces. So the biggest challenge would be if you were going to blow all your budget on one idea without testing it first. And testing is so much easier in the digital world than it ever has been before. I think the, um, the temptation with digital is to see it as incredibly complicated and incredibly difficult, particularly when it comes to using data. And actually the simplest way of understanding things is through simple human experience. Some of the things we've seen rise in the social web are things which allow us to use technology in a much more human way. And I think the way in which consumers navigate through different digital channels is actually surprisingly human as well. So forget all the panic, forget all the new platforms, new channels, and just take it right back down to a human level and try and understand what it's like for your customer. Because for them too, this new world could be quite scary and difficult to navigate, and that, that's a big valuable role that a brand can play. Yeah, I, I, have, I have two things which I think are really problematic for, for businesses that are not doing this stuff. And I think the first thing is that I, I very passionately believe that any sector that hasn't yet been completely transformed by the web simply will be and very few sectors have really been transformed. Now, anything that hasn't yet will, will be. Um, I think that the second thing is that when it comes to how we do business, the tools and resources that we use, I think if your business is based upon a kind of closed system or proprietary technology, you're going to find it really hard because what we've seen to date is that when you make something out of software and put it on the web, and make it free in particular, then it tends to beat any existing system, even if that system has been there for 100 years. So take banking and finance, which is something of personal interest to me. The banking and finance system relies upon infrastructure that's already in place. The web is a new infrastructure. It does a lot of that stuff better. It's simply a matter of time before making something that's free out of software on the web beats the proprietary system of banking and finance.